So I've lived in America for most of my life, right? I moved here when I was eight. And since since then, I've had the unfortunate privilege of having to go through pretty much every aspect of the American immigration system. I came here on a dependent visa with my family, and thus I had to go back to India on a regular basis to re-up our visa. So every two years for the first 10 years of my tenure in America, I'd miss out on summer with friends. Not that I didn't really enjoy going back to India to see my family and experience my country of birth, but I also missed my new friends. Now, our visa uh, once was denied because we didn't have the right paperwork uh, and it wasn't filled before we got there. So we had to rebook our flights and stay an extra two weeks uh, that we weren't expecting to do, which resulted in me missing the first week of school in 10th grade. I wasn't even a popular kid to begin with, right? But when you miss the first week of school, you miss out on all the inside jokes and the fun little icebreakers that people go through at that age. I felt alone, even though... Uh, even in my nerdy circle of friends who had an entire summer to get closer, and then on top of that, the first week of school as well. I've dealt with aggressive TSA agents questioning me about G.I. Joes and my Game Boy Color at the airport. I've been through the green card process from top to bottom. I've spent years explaining to every level of authority, from airport security to cops to government officials, what a green card is. Because... Most Americans have no idea what the immigration system is. Look, a green card is your permanent residency card. It allows you the same rights as every American except, you know, the right to vote. To most Americans, they still believe that immigration is like Ellis Island, right? Some Americans even believe that's where immigrants still come to. You've no idea how many times I've been asked if I came through Ellis Island and I have to explain the history of America to Americans, Right? It left me wondering, how is it that these ignorant people just get their citizenship, but people like me have to go through hell and high water to earn our citizenship? What kind of system would allow that? And if you're wondering what made me the radical I am today, it was asking that question based on my cit interactions with average citizens. After that, it was an endless conversation about getting my citizenship, and quite frankly, I didn't even want to get my citizenship because the only additional thing it would grant me is the right to vote. And in America's broke-ass electoral system where I have to pick between Rapey McGreed A and Rapey McGreed B, I didn't really feel like my beliefs and perspectives were being represented. But... Under the Trump era, my mother and my now ex-wife were concerned about my safety, and I went through that process as well. After an endless barrage of paperwork and awkward interview where we spent a little too much time talking about parking tickets and the creepiest oath ceremony you'd ever see, I got my citizenship at the end of 2019. It would have cost me over $2,000 had it not been for a loophole, and more paperwork to show that I was actually below the poverty line. For me, it took 23 years to get my citizenship. Even if you go through these legal channels, which involves a visa, a green card, and then the whole citizenship process from the t application to the testing to the ceremony, that can take up to 15 years to become a full-fledged citizen of America. And that's not even counting the years that it can take to get sponsored to pay upwards of $10,000 to come to the states. Turns out the cost of unbridled freedom is about $10,000 and a majority of your civil rights. Regardless of all that, I continue to face persecution in America, you know, but at least now when I'm persecuted, I get persecuted for both my skin color and my radical ideologies. Right? Liberals have even come out and said that I can't have an opinion on what POCs are going through because I have a, quote, white passing face. Not something I'm making up. Literally something someone said to me once. Pretty much denying my whole life history because I'm not brown enough for their sympathies. Well, at least under Trump, conservatives were willing to listen to me. Right? I mean, they still argue and say immigrants are st trying to steal your jobs, but they're willing to listen and don't deny my ethnicity whenever it's inconvenient for them. Hell, even after I gr got my green card, when I went through states like Arizona and California, Texas, or New Mexico, border checkpoints made me extremely nervous. 
Hell, it makes me extremely nervous going through them now, even though I'm a citizen, right? The human roid rages that join Border Patrol might not think that a brown person is allowed to be the citizen of America. Look, I've been through the immigration process under Clinton, Bush, Obama, and Trump. And I can tell you with confidence that nothing much has changed except maybe the platitudes. And honestly, I don't think nothing much will change under the Biden administration either. In fact, things might get worse because that's how compounding effects work. Under Obama, the Immigration and Custom Enforcement Agency was introduced, which made things regarding policing immigrants even more confusing. Is it ISIS jurisdiction or Border Patrol? If an immigrant is inside a mall, do we call the regular cops, the mall cops, ICE, or is it Homeland Security? Doesn't matter because all of which are racist and think that immigrants come through Ellis Island. Now, Obama also built the detention centers, which Trump used to detain immigrant children and separate families. Now, under Trump, these were called cages, but under Biden and Obama, they're called detention facilities. Right? You guys remember detention from school? It's that room that you got sent to when you weren't obedient enough, where you'd stare at a wall and contemplate your fleeting existence. And that's what liberals would have you believe these are under Biden. In reality, they are the same cages that liberals and faux progressives freaked out about when Trump was in office. Right now, Democrats like the queen of all Yas queens, Nancy Pelosi, calls this a humanitarian crisis while ignoring the human rights violations of the Biden administration. Right now, there is a record number of children being detained in these facilities, which are really immigrant prisons. In the last month alone, the number of kids in these facilities have gone up by a thousand kids. And instead of being released to families or guardians, they're being sent to a, quote, immigrant decompression center, which really just sounds like it's a clockwork orange style room where they pump these kids with pro-American propaganda or, as it's known in many circles, CNN, MSNBC and Fox News. We would also accept if you added NPR to that list. Now, those kids are going to come out of those decompression centers like pro-capitalist zombies saying, Consume! Must consume everything! Now, Biden did boast, similar to Trump, that he's sending immigrants back from the border. Okay, he said the immigrants are coming up here because Joe Biden is a, quote, nice guy. Actually, nobody is saying that about Joe Biden. Even when Obama says it, you can see him grit his teeth so hard that they might crack. Right? The guy tried to cut Social Security four times, voted for the violent extermination of brown people in the Middle East, legislated the violent incarceration of black people in America, sexually assaulted women, and can't go more than 10 minutes without spouting a racial epithet, is not a nice guy. I mean, no wonder Kamala Harris and Biden teamed up since they both gave themselves terrible nicknames, right? Joe Biden just gave himself the nickname of nice guy, right? Call me Joe, nice guy, Biden. And Kamala Harris gave herself the nickname top cop. Well, at least Kamala's nickname is accurate. Now, one of the ways Biden is sending immigrants back is is by using Title 42, claiming that it's a public health concern due to COVID-19. Now, Title 42 also rejects due process for these people and strips them of their belongings before they're kicked out of America. Now, why would you need to strip them of their stuff? You know, no, oh, that's, that's right. I'm so sorry. I forgot. We're a capitalist country and we can't let a day go by without severely fucking over the underprivileged. Look, if America goes a day without fucking over the poor and the underprivileged, it starts shaking and sweating like Evan McGregor in train spotting. And yes, America will be hallucinating babies crawling on the ceilings too. And the first question for that baby is where are its papers? Okay, just because it's a hallucination doesn't mean that baby shouldn't go through the right channels to be a hallucination in America. Okay, that's an illegal hallucination baby. Okay, that is that is an illegal anchor hallucination, baby. Now, 
If this was really about protecting Americans against COVID-19 from other countries, there would be better systems in place to take care of Americans at home. This would in, would have involved sending masks to every American, an emergency UBI at least, universal health care, a cancellation of all sports and turning those facilities into triage center for COVID patients, educating Americans on vitamins and supplements that would prevent COVID and be a, re and a reasonable vaccine rollout where we know whether the vaccines will prevent you from getting the disease. But... No, let's not focus on any of that. Joe Biden is more focused on getting the economy back open so workers can be exploited nonstop. And those that do make it through the, the immigration system, they get put into crammed spaces where COVID is spreading quickly. The same goes for kids as well. They're being put into former oil fields at four times the space's capacity. So in reality, this isn't about COVID or protecting anybody, but more about a callous immigration system that punishes people for wanting a better life. These immigrants are coming to America because their lives have been wrecked by neoliberal economic policies and corporations that have taken over their towns and left them with nothing. They're refugees of capitalism, and because they might be th that might be revealed. America have to, has to chuck them out as quickly as possible. And look, for those of you saying, well, they should go through the proper channels, they missed the whole beginning of this podcast where I explained how difficult and expensive it is to become a citizen of this country. I was lucky to go through the system via legal channels, and even then I faced ignorance and racism from government officials and propagandized citizens. Immigrants that are desperate for a better life and try to come through the U.S.-Mexico border face even harsher conditions and are demonized as job stealers and criminals. And in reality, the ones that can go through the process legally are the ones that can afford it or are willing to go into debt for it. I've been an immigrant under two Republicans and two Democrats. And it didn't matter which corporate party was in charge of the situation, just kept getting worse and worse. And we can clearly see, under Biden, it'll get even worse. Joe Biden isn't a nice guy, nor will he help immigrants and refugees whose lives American capitalism has ruined. The goal of every administration is to keep the public in the dark about the difficulties of being an immigrant to further divide the working class. This is the time to get educated and show some compassion and realize that both parties don't really care about immigrants. And that has been your dispatch for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did enjoy it, please go ahead and hit the like button, hit the share button, and get the word out about content like this. Content like this is often suppressed. It is not shown to as many people as uh, as, as it could be shown to, especially on platforms like YouTube and Facebook. Uh, so if you're watching these on those platforms or listening to them on these on those platforms, please do hit the like button. Please do share and make sure that you're subscribed. Uh, and last but not least, uh, I encourage people to fight censorship by going over to Rockfin, rockfin.com slash Haha. Uh, and if you're on stable financial ground, you can endorse my channel for 10 bucks a month. And not only do you get all of my premium content, but you get the premium content of pretty much every single channel on Rockfin. It, it, we've got people like uh, Graham Elwood, Ron Placone. I'm very excited to announce that I'm bringing back the live virtual stand-up comedy shows once a month, last Friday of every month. Tickets for those shows are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K R I S H M O H A N H A H A dot com. Uh, while you're on my website, you can do a plethora of different things. You can catch up on episodes of this very podcast, uh, of my live stream show, Road Reflections, and past episodes of Fork Full of Noodles, uh, which are related to the live virtual comedy shows that I'm doing. That's, that's how they're recorded. They're recorded in front of a live virtual audience. So uh, you can catch up on those. Uh, if you want to, you can also make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member. Sustaining members get free tickets to those live virtual comedy shows I just talked about. Uh, they also get additional bonus stand-up comedy content that nobody else gets, as well as some free additional fun gifts that I am planning to, uh, to send to uh, the sustaining members. 
You can also check out my stand-up comedy albums uh, that are available on my website. And if you go to my Bandcamp, which is krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com, you can get pretty much my entire stand-up comedy collection for free. Uh, uh, there's, I think, one comedy album that you might have to pay for right now, uh, but everything's on a pay-what-you-can uh, price level, so if you would like to get most of that stuff for free, you can do so over on my Bandcamp page, which, again, is krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com. And lastly, I also want to let you guys know that uh, if, uh, if you're not a fan of the YouTubes, uh, or the Facebooks and their censorship of, uh, of content creators uh, that uh, talk about anti-establishment topics, uh, a good place to go right now would be to Rockfin. You can find my channel over on rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, they're a blockchain crypto site that primarily focuses on ensuring that content creators can earn a living by creating content and they're uncensored so you can basically talk about what you feel like you need to talk about without the censorship of any sort of algorithm uh, and uh, and all the content will be curated based on what you subscribe to so once again go to rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha uh, the subscriptions are about ten dollars a month but when you become a subscriber over at rockfin you not only get my premium content but you get the premium content to basically every single content creator that's on Rockfin. That's Graham Elwood, that's Ron Pacone, Lee Camp, Kim Iverson, Nico House, Jimmy Dore, The Convo Couch, Action for Assange, and plenty more. Uh, so be sure uh, to to check out Rockfin, and if you're ready to leave YouTube, that is the place to go to, to become a subscriber. Leave tips for channels that you like, and there's plenty of free content on there as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Boom. Our guests today, Savage Joy and uh, Pat Coates. We've got Nico House. We've got uh, a Action for Assange team. We've got a plethora of people that you guys can go check out uh, on on Rockfin. So I highly encourage you guys to go check out Rockfin. Uh, Rockfin.com slash Krishmohan. Ha ha. Uh, that's, that's my uh, Rockfin channel there.